George Zimmerman is a liar. Now we know that we can't go on to the job and use a racial slur or make some horrific mistake and tell our bosses that, oh, it was just an oversight. We can't say that we misspoke. That stuff only happens in TV land, in the land of politics. In the real world, we know we can't get away with that crap. But George, George Zimmerman tells the court that he is indigent. He allows his lawyer to stand there and petition the court that he is indigent in order to get bail set at a low amount. Now, it is said that this money, it was an oversight that the court was not told that this money existed. <laughs> now we know that's not real. We know that doesn't happen in the real world. Nobody's gonna forget they have got 200 grand. Or well, maybe if you're Warren Buffett, you might forget you have 200 grand. As a matter of fact, you might be able to find 200 grand worth of coins under the cushions in Warren's sofa. But not somebody like George Zimmerman. Not somebody who doesn't have money. He is no, there is no way he's forgetting he's got 200 grand. This money existed from the point where George's former attorneys turned on him. As a matter of fact, I believe it is the reason there was a dispute between them. Whatever happened was so bad that the attorneys were so furious, they, they actually told the world that their client could not be trusted and that he had gone missing. So, that money existed from at least that point. And George's so-called friend, Frank Taffy, has been out in the media lying about the quantity of money collected on this website. It's just amazing to me that he could get away with that. Who the hell would take that kind of risk of lying to the judge from the very outset? Lying to the court? Who would take such a risk? It's, it's mind-boggling. But then again, George is a risky kind of guy, isn't he? George takes risks like assaulting police officers in the commission of their duties. Who the hell does that? I mean, you're in a bar, your friend is serving drinks to minors, is doing something wrong. You may not notice what's going on, but the cop, the undercover cop notices, he's watching what's going on. The cop goes to arrest your friend and you decide you're gonna go walk over there and get all up in the cop's face. Are you kidding me? Who the hell does that? That's crazy. You may feel sorry for your friend, but you know he's wrong. And you know it's practically suicide to go and get involved. He broke the law, and it's too bad, but he's getting arrested. You're not going to go get involved in that, but George, George's a risky kind of guy. See? It's risky to take a loaded gun out into a neighborhood, a residential area, where there are kids, no doubt. I mean, I've visited Florida, and trust me, Florida is as hot as Jamaica, and you know Jamaica is hot. That was my impression of Florida. 
And it was only seven in the evening. So you know there were people out, maybe getting ready to walk their dogs, maybe kids out to riding their bikes, you know. Who the hell takes a loaded gun into a situation like that? You're just asking for trouble. If the gun goes off by accident, if someone bumps you and it goes off, if what so many things could go wrong. You just don't take that kind of risk. But George, not George boy. George is a risky kind of guy. And George, he goes on the internet and brags that he's beat the rap on a crime that was committed apparently by a group of friends of which he is one. And the friends get caught and apparently go to jail for the crime and George gets away with it. And he's bragging about it on the internet. And George is on the internet calling his former girlfriend who he abused, calling her a hoe and spelling it wrong. There's just a simmering absurdity to George's life. And it ain't no joke because all of that culminated in the taking of the life of a young man with tremendous promise. How sad is that? And what are we left with? We're we left with George and the absurdity of him. And we've got to face that. We've got to swallow that. And we don't want to swallow it. No parent wants to swallow it. To know that so much promise, so much goodness could be exchanged for so much colossal sleaziness. We don't want to accept that. It's just too hard to bear. Thanks for listening.